What's up guys, thank you for coming back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to be talking about uh, a question that somebody asked me on TikTok, but it came through like an Instagram message technically. Uh, the question is how familiar should a tour manager be with a band or artist's technical items, like the production, the backline, any kind of SFX, et cetera. How much should a TM realistically know about this stuff for the band or for the artist. And at first I just wanna say thank you for asking that question. It's it's a great question and I would love to get more questions from you guys. So if you have any um, about the music industry or about tour life or about bands or anything on the in that realm of conversation, please put it in, in the comments below. And of course, if you guys wanna watch more videos, please subscribe to the channel. Please follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. It's the same username everywhere at Alexi Wayman. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how familiar a TM should realistically be with a band's technical production items. Um, I'm gonna start by saying what my general belief is to answer this question, because I do have one, just one blanket answer that I'm gonna give you. And then I'm gonna give you supporting reasons and examples for why I believe that. And again, guys, if you have questions, if I don't mention something, or if you want me to elaborate on something, please put it in the comments. So my personal belief, and I've said this before in my other videos and on TikTok and Instagram, is that a tour manager is essentially like a jack of all trades on the tour. And I do not believe in white glovers. I believe that a tour manager specifically should absolutely know everything about the tech so that they can make the best decisions possible for the band and for the show and for a variety of reasons, which I'll get into in just a second, but in general, Yes, a tour manager should know pretty much everything about the tech to as far of a degree as makes sense for that tour. So the first reason why a tour manager should know a lot about the band, artist, tech is when it comes to day of show executions. So everything from load ins to sound checks to even during the show, a tour manager is the person there overseeing the entire success of the show and the tour. And sure, a lot of bands on tour will have um, a variety of techs with them. They'll have stage hands, they'll have audio techs, SFX techs with them. Not every band will have that, but even those that do, there are moments where you or I as a TM will find myself in a situation where there's nobody around to help and I, you, if you're a TM, have to know how to get through that. It also makes everything go so much faster. It makes the load in 10 times faster if you can be up there knowing exactly what does what and why it's there. Same as the sound check, you can troubleshoot issues on the fly. And of course, during the show, if you're on stage with your artist or side stage and something goes horribly wrong and your guitar technician isn't there, you can jump in and fix that guitar or fix the Apollo or fix the SPD or whatever is, is happening, you can jump in and fix it. On this last weekend shows with the tour I'm on currently, um, we had an, an issue on stage. Uh, the artist I'm with uses an Ableton Live session file for triggering samples and also for track follow throughs for backing tracks. And there was an issue where microphone two, it's a wireless microphone running through a receiver into a UAD into Ableton uh, and then out into the house. There was an issue where the microphone from the beginning just had this crazy amount of reverb on it. And from first glance, you would look at that track and you wouldn't see any indication of a reverb being too wet or even on for that matter. What turned out happening was that there were two different tracks. There was a dry vox track, a dry vox channel, and there was um, a wet vox reverb bus. And for, for some reason, that microphone output was being routed into both of those tracks and then both of those tracks were sending out into the house. So essentially, no matter what we did to the dry vox, the reverb bus was still on the whole time. So we had to change the routing so that it was only going to the dry vox and not to the reverb bus. And because I was on stage and because I'm familiar with Ableton and this artist's particular setup, I was able to quickly diagnose that and fix it so that the artist didn't have to go the entire show with this crazy wet reverb, which worst case, I mean, that show could have been compromised if that wasn't fixed. The second reason why a TM should in fact be very familiar with a band's or an artist's technical needs, technical production, SFX, etc., is because it benefits the budgeting and the settlements. Knowing which gear your artist or band needs, how much it costs and what it does will give you a lot of financial power when coming to things like budgeting and your settlements. Uh, for example, knowing which backline your band absolutely needs and 
what it can afford. Does your band absolutely need to use this particular backline item at each show? Is If there's a cost from the promoter, maybe you can bypass that cost by bringing your own because it's cheaper to fly with. You have to be able to assess what the need of that particular item is for the band and what it does. And in some cases, there could even be workarounds to make things happen without that particular backline item that you need to be aware of, or that I as a TM or whoever's watching this that wants to be a TM needs to be aware of. This also pertains to any kind of SFX like pyro, uh, CO2, etc. I'll give you an example. Um, last, last year I was on tour um, in, in a city and we were looking at SFX options. We wanted to bring some CO2 to the show to really give it that, that, uh, that next level production. And um, the quote that we, we got from the promoter for CO2 was extremely high. And I only knew it was high because I had recently done a show in that same city with a different promoter and gotten a much better rate for the CO2. And as it turns out, that particular uh, promoter that was quoting us high had an exclusive sort of under the table deal with this SFX provider and they were upselling it to their artists and to, their, to the tours that came through because they wanted to make that extra buck. If I wasn't familiar and aware of where those costs were for those types of backline technical SFX options, we could be paying a lot more money, which obviously is not good for the band and for the tour. So we essentially ended up saving money on that because their wireless rack wasn't working the way it was supposed to. Reason number three why a TM should know everything about technical and production items for their band is because you can optimize the artist's technical possibilities. Meaning that if you know exactly what an artist is using, if you know exactly what tech and production they have, you can help figure out ways to make that more efficient. Like, Artists and bands are incredible at what they do. They're creatives, but very often I've seen they're working with these really outdated workflows. Like they're working with systems that are outdated and just routed in very strange ways. And there are so many better ways to do it. And if you know how to do it better, you can show it to them and then that can save time. It can save money because maybe you no longer need this particular item you've been flying with for the past 10 years. And it can also save headache from troubleshooting issues during the show that don't need to even happen because it's just so complicated. For example, I did a show with an artist uh, recently where we were having just this really, really hot signal coming from their wireless microphone at the front of house in the PA. And it, we'd had no idea. I mean, originally we had no idea why the artist was like, oh, like sometimes it does that. I don't know why the audio engineer at the venue was like, guys, it's not on my end. Like you're just sending me a hot signal. Well, it turns out that the wireless receiver for the microphone actually has its own gain staging input. And so we were able to see that that input was set to 99%. So it was receiving and it was sending out an extremely hot signal right from the jump. And at this point in time, the artist had no idea that was a thing. Um, so I went in and we went in together and diagnosed that. We brought it down to like 40% and it, just like magic, everything, all the fuzziness went away, no more distortion, no more clipping. Everything was clean just because of that one slight adjustment that the artist just wasn't aware of. And as a TM, because I was able to troubleshoot and diagnose the technical steps, the gain staging that was required to get that sound to the PA, I was able to solve that issue for them. And now they know moving forward that they shouldn't stage their receiver that high. Reason number four why a TM should know a lot of stuff about the artists and bands, technical production, backline items, um, is to be able to troubleshoot physical damages, physical damages quickly. Being able to know what's wrong just visually because you're familiar with the actual hardware itself. And if you see something wrong, you know it right away and you can troubleshoot it. I'll give you an example. Recently, we were um, I was opening up a flight case. We had a flight eight. And um, I noticed that the Apollo, the UAD, had some sort of damage to it. Like the physical, the physical components on the front of the, of the Apollo were damaged. And it didn't necessarily affect the Apollo's ability to work the way it's supposed to, but I was able to kind of backtrack and figure out that that damage was caused by TSA because they opened up the case. They were checking it obviously for security purposes. And when they put it back on or something, they put it in the wrong way and it caused a piece of the, the, the front panel to chip off and break. 
And the reason why it's good that I caught that is because within a few days, I filled out a damage claim report with the airline and they actually then contacted TSA and confirmed that, that there was that, that, that thing did happen. And they pretty much gave us a reimbursement for it, just financial reimbursement for the damages of that particular device. And I filled out that form within like two days of opening up that case and seeing it because I knew there was something wrong with it. An artist maybe would catch on to that eventually, but they may not be as inclined to go through the steps of filling out that paperwork to get the claim as I would as a TM because I want the band to make money, I want the band to get the money they're owed, and I want us to have a great show. Another example is actually on that same Apollo because um, because security and then the airline also kind of mess around with the bag a little bit or with the case. Uh, there was a TRS cable that was snapped off and it was embedded and stuck in one of the output channels of the Apollo. In fact, it was stuck in our output channel eight. And so the moment I opened that case and saw that we could not use channel eight, I had to then go to our input list, go to our front of house engineer and pretty much repatch that part of the show because we had in channel seven and eight, a left and right stereo split for the backing Vox and for a percussive element that the artist had, we had a stereo mix for it. So we had to then consolidate it into a mono signal on channel seven and not use channel eight entirely. Because I opened it up and saw it right away, we were able to catch that so we wouldn't have to go through all these steps of trying to figure out why isn't this working, blah, 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 blah. And the fifth reason why a tour manager should know, should know a lot of stuff about the artist band's technical production items um, is because it helps the venue technicians. Like a venue front of house guy, venue techs, they don't always know your gear, obviously. They're there, they know their venue's gear hopefully pretty well, but they don't always understand what you're sending to them. And if you can help educate them as a TM, as a, as a tour manager, uh, you can help set them up for success for a faster load in, better sound check, and more efficient troubleshooting during the show if something goes wrong. For example, with one of the bands I toured with recently, um, the bass player uses a haptic transductor which if you don't know what that is, that's totally fine because not many people do. It's basically a physical pad that the bass player stands on in order to feel the bass frequencies. And it runs with an XLR to the sub cabinet versus like to the front of house or to a monitor mix or anything. And we had a show with one technician who just had never seen one before and they were trying to figure out, do they need to patch this? Does that run into like a front monitor wedge? Is, is, there, is, it, is it powered, et cetera, et cetera. And I was able to show it to him in real time to, to save their time and also to help them understand what it does and to kind of, you know, ease their pain and concern with them thinking they had to like do anything with it because basically it's our own thing. But if I hadn't known what that item was and I hadn't explained it to the technician, they may have spent more time trying to figure out how to patch it into their list. Is it a monitor? Is it not a monitor, etc. So yeah, there you go. That's, um, those are a few reasons why I believe a tour manager should be very well acquainted with and artists or bands, technical um, items, technical writers typically go over all of these things and maybe I'll do a video further explaining how I create a technical writer to kind of speak to all these points. But this is more of an overview video of like, how familiar should a TM be with a band artist tech? The answer is very familiar. And if I miss something, guys, please let me know in the comments. Um, I, I'm sure in my, in my crazy head I missed something or maybe I didn't speak about something enough. Please leave a comment. I would love to hear what your thoughts are. I would love to comment and chat with you guys. And also, if you have questions about TMing or if you're interested in working with me on a, on a tour, I do have contact info in my link tree, which is going to be in my social media bios. There might even be one on YouTube here as well in my uh, whatever about section, I guess. But give me a shout. I'm always happy to advise and give some some uh, some help to, to bands on the road or bands that are looking to get onto the road. And also follow me on YouTube. Of course, it means a lot to me. I'm not very good at promoting these sorts of things. So the more follows I get, um, just the more opportunity I have to share my knowledge and to connect with you guys. Instagram, YouTube, obviously, TikTok. It's all at Alexi Wayman. Um, I'll have links to it uh, probably in, in the description of this video and also on my um, in the about page or like on my YouTube profile, whatever. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.